In late 2018, a small box of photographs was discovered in Kilburnie Homestead's storage archives. On examining the contents, it was clear that most of the photos were images from Beryl Campbell's service with the Australian Army Nursing Service in World War I. This is Beryl's story. She was born at Kilburnie on 9th of December 1888, youngest daughter of John and Elizabeth Campbell. Her twin sister Ruby had come into the world a few hours earlier. The twins were always close, even though Beryl left Kilburnie to pursue a career in nursing, training in the Rockhampton Hospital and graduating in around 1910. After a few years of civilian nursing, Beryl enlisted to serve in the Australian Army Nursing Service in November 1914, departing for Egypt in December of the same year aboard the Kyara as part of Number 1 Australian General Hospital, which was based in the converted Heliopolis Palace Hotel in Cairo. What follows are Beryl's own descriptions of her photographs, written on the back of each photo carefully in ink. This is the entrance, with a fourth field ambulance car just drawn up. And this is the most beautiful room I've ever seen. The marble steps lead up into the surgical ward where I live. Heliopolis House Hotel on the next corner to us, where we used to go a great deal for dinners and suppers before everybody went to the Dardanelles. The telegraph pole had the bad taste to get in the way, but note the donkeys all ready for hire. A musky street scene. It is in the musky that all the bazaars are. I would love to get a photograph of the bazaars, but the streets are so narrow you would never get enough light. The legs of the tall, thin officer so took my fancy that I snapped him. Two natives cutting chaff near the obelisk. Whiskey with a lot of urchins at the Athenan Dam and Beryl's brother Gordon Campbell. Gordon was in the fifth light horse and he had time to get his photograph taken in front of the Sphinx as so many others did. One of the battalions at ease. I took this photograph from the ward window. The same battalion after falling in again for continuation of the route march. The sun has just risen at 6.30 a.m. and it is making their bayonets gleam. The reality of war was now drawing close. This is cleaning up at Heliopolis camp before leaving for the Dardanelles. This photograph is dated 10th of April, 1915. Australian and Turkish dead on a trawler awaiting burial. This is Sister Beryl Campbell at the rear and Sisters Forsyth, Lyons and Sorensen. And this is Beryl and Sister Howard who was head nurse at Rockhampton with some boys from the Dardanelles. This is a converted stadium at a fun park that was near the Heliopolis Palace Hotel. And this is Sister Beryl and Sister Howard again with some more of the boys from the Dardanelles. This was taken at the converted fun park. Young Harold Sherwin. Sister Scully and her nephew, Reg Morley. Reg is a darling youngster and a sergeant in the fifth light horse. Fred Knott, Emma Knott, young Tucker, and some sister whose name Beryl had forgotten. The nurses and servicemen tried to distract themselves from the horrors of war by going to horse shows and attending fancy dress balls, but the reality is death was often not far away. These are carloads of sisters attending Sister L. Bickle's funeral. And this is a New Zealand Mounted Rifle Officer's funeral. Note the reversed arms. And outside the gate, the whole squadron awaiting the arrival of the cortege to mount and fall in. Sister Keyes and Alan Abercrombie. Alan is Colonel Stoddart's brother-in-law from the second light horse, who is reported to have been killed on Monday. Towards the end of 1916, it was time for Beryl to return to Australia for a period of leave. Unfortunately, en route to Australia, there was an outbreak outbreak of cerebral spinal meningitis aboard the ship. Beryl did what she could to help the others, but eventually she herself contracted the disease. She was offloaded at Durban 
and transferred to the quarantine hospital on Salisbury Island off Cape Town where she nearly died. The treatment for meningitis included the radical step of cutting off her hair. Fortunately, she survived. This is her on her return journey on the Nesta. The companion is engaged to General Birdwood's daughter. Beryl was promoted to matron sometime in 1917. And in June, she embarked from Australia on the RMS Multan as one of three senior matrons leading a contingent of 215 Australian nurses bound for Salonica. This is Matron White, General Featherstone and Beryl in Salonica. And this is Mr Vaughan and Beryl's assistant, Miss Draper, taken outside her rooms. That's Beryl's bed and the chair the old alarm clock sits on at night. Mr Vaughan looks just the same as of old. And this is Sister Christine Sorensen and Beryl posing. And some Macedonian women spinning in a village out of Salonica in February of 1918. Beryl still found time for personal enjoyment. She adopted Rags, a French poodle, and at one point was famously engaged to three men at once. Possibly this young chap was one of them. And apparently this young chap is a relic of the Euripides, the ship who was getting a knitting lesson. This is Beryl and Corporal Bill Hawkins, the Canadian, who won the King's Prize at Bisley in 1913. They played England versus Overseas Dominions for the Auction Bridge Championships and the Overseas Dominions licked England. In June of 1918, Beryl travelled to London and attended an awards ceremony at Westminster Abbey where she was presented with the prestigious Royal Red Cross, first class. She also took her camera along and took the opportunity to take some photographs of the royal family. The figures underneath the crosses are the King and Lord Kitchener, and this is a photograph of the Queen leaving Westminster Abbey. And of this photograph, Beryl said, On the whole, considering the opposition I had, I was lucky to get any sort of a snap. And this is King George V with hand raised in salute, accompanied by Bishop Boyd Carpenter. One of the deans is preceding him to his carriage. At the conclusion of World War I, Beryl waited until all of her nurses had departed from Salonica and then she herself embarked to begin her new civilian life, taking with her many happy memories of her time, including this much valued picture given to her by Captain Koch. The boat with the cross underneath is the HMS Sydney, leaving in pursuit of the Emden after receipt of the wireless from the Cocos Island station. And this mysterious gentleman with no caption may well be Captain Koch. There were also sad memories of comrades that had fallen and of patients that the nurses could not save. But after returning to her family and life in Australia, Beryl continued to hold dear the time that she spent as a matron with the Army Nursing Service in World War One. <laughs>